Welcome back. This is going to be our Algebra 2 uh, Function Foundations, Lesson 6, uh, Inverse and Functions, Homework Review, Part 2. And a reminder, please make sure you catch Part 1 if you did not do so yet. Definitely has some good notes on describing, talking about uh, functions inverse, as well as go back to uh, Lesson 5, we talked about the one-to-one -one functions. All right, and again, please, if you can, uh, hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and know when new videos are going to be released if you are finding yourself, you know, find these videos helpful for you. All right, so question five. For a one-to-one -one function, it is known that f of zero equals six and f of eight equals zero, which the following must be true about the graph of this inverse, this function's inverse. Well, we know that for f of x, we have two coordinates, 0, 6, and 8, 0. Therefore, its inverse, again, we know we're going to switch x and y. Inverse will have 6, 0, and then we'll have a coordinate 0, 8. That means the inverse will have an x-intercept of 6, and the inverse will have a y-intercept of 8. The idea of y-intercept is going to be the coordinates or the value of y when x equals 0, okay? So of 8, not negative 8, of 8, okay? And x-intercept is where the value of x when y equals 0. So we see in this case that the y-intercept of 6, that's not true. Okay, x-intercept of negative 6, no, that's not true x-intercept of negative 8, that's not true. The only one that's true here is a y-intercept of 8. So we can, if we have coordinates, one way to do to kind of figure out answers is just going to be switch x's and y's and then be able to interpret from there. Okay. Here, y, equal, y equals h of x is how we define the graph shown below. Sketch a graph of the inverse and create a table of values if needed. So, let's make a table then. Here we have, in this case, our table of values for h of x. So we have, in this case, x and y. All right. And so we have, in this case, x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. And then the y value is negative 4. And so x value is going to be negative 4. The y value is going to be negative 3. And the x value is negative 1. The y value is negative 2. And the x value is going to be, it looks like 4. And the y value is negative 1. Therefore, if, we, if we're going to find, in this case, the inverse, the inverse in this case, I'll use blue, we're just going to switch all of the x's and y's. So instead of negative 4, 5, it's going to be negative, sorry, negative 5, 4, negative 5, negative 4, we have negative 4, negative 5. So negative 4, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here. Okay, and if negative 4 comma negative 3 becomes negative 3 comma negative 4, okay, so negative 3 comma negative 4 will be right here. Just erase that little stray mark there. Okay, we have negative 1 comma negative 2 becomes negative 2 comma negative 1, negative 2 comma negative 1, right here. And then 4 comma negative 1 becomes negative 1 comma 4. Negative 1 comma 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 becomes this graph here. And so now if we try to graph this, it will look something like this. Now, let's keep in mind that this graph here is of the original graph, this graph of the inverse, which I hope should maybe hopefully draw a little better, but you know, I tried. Uh, in this case, what we can do is if we reflect this graph along the line, y equals x, this line here, y equals x, 
we will see hopefully it kind of mirrors the picture okay kind of reflection over that line and so we want to write our our uh, domain here domain for the original function the least the smallest value of x for the for the original function h of x will be now it says interval notation very important here interval notation will be including negative five so we have a hard bracket okay and it goes up to positive four positive four so okay so our range, our range, I'm going to use a hard bracket again because we include four. Uh, our range is the lowest y value is going to be negative four to the highest y value of negative one, which include those values. Therefore, we use square brackets. Now, the domain for our, for our, domain for our uh, inverse here, we see the, the leftmost x value is negative four. All right, and the rightmost x value is negative one. So we include those values too. You will notice this is the same exact range, or same exact values we found in the range. And in the same way, for our range, the y values for the inverse, the lowest value is negative five, while the highest y value is going to be four. And so we can say in this case that, you know, when we do this here, that the find these values, right? We sketch this reflection. We also see not only the points reflect X and Y, we can make the following statement. So we can say in this case, the domain of a function is equal to, or is the same as, same as the range of its inverse. In the same way, the range of the function of the a function of a function, relation a function. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen, it's on the fly. The range of a function is the same as the domain of its inverse and it should be not apostrophe okay not for possession in this case so all right very important concept here very important concept so in the same way the domain of the inverse is going to be the range of the of the original function and the range of the inverse is going to be the domain of the original function okay so that's how we figure out the and again so whole idea about switching the x's and y's like we did before okay and so now we get to number seven. A function y equals a, a of r equals pi r squared is a one-to-one -one function that uses a circle's radius as input and gives a circle's area as output. Selected values of some function are shown. Determine a inverse a of nine pi. Well, we can look at the table. And since a of three equals nine pi, that means a, uh, a inverse of 9 pi will equal to 3. And then we look at a inverse of 36 pi. We know that if a of 6 equals 36 pi, that a inverse of 36 pi equals 6. So now we determine the values of a inverse of 100 pi. Well, okay. So we know in this case, if a inverse of 100 pi, 100 pi is equal to, now I want to find the r value, right? So here we know that pi r squared is equal to 100 pi. We're solving for r. Therefore, r squared is equal to 100 and r should equal to 10. Therefore, a inverse of 100 pi equals 10. In the same way, which I do in this case, a inverse of 225 pi, 225 pi, oops, 
that makes a little more, I'm trying to make it a little more, a little neater, okay? So, A inverse of 225 pi, we're trying to find in this case, well, if pi r squared equals 225 pi, then divide both sides by pi, r squared is equal to 225, r must equal to 15. So therefore, we see in this case that A inverse 225 is equal to 15. It's going to be the radius of the circle whose area is 225 pi. And then the original function y equals A of r convert and input the circle's radius to an output, the circle's area. What are the inputs and outputs of the inverse? Well, the input would be the circle's area. And the output would be the circle's radius. That's we definitely have a partial because of position. Because they kind of switch places. Okay. Okay, so we want to see the full page. Here we go. All right, it kind of makes sense That's how it works out. Okay. So we have one more question. full screen. So a domain and range of one-to-one -one function y equals f of x are given below in set build notation. Give the domain and range of the inverse also in set build notation. Well, going back to what we said before, our notes, the domain of the function is the same as the range of its inverse. So domain of the function will be the same as the range of the inverse. Therefore, the range of the inverse will be y or y such that y must be, and in this case, the numbers, or the letter will be x, though. So, so we're not, so, so it was x becomes y. So we end up getting, in this case, or y is such that from negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 5. Okay, so we're just switching the, the, the letters. And we want to find domain of the, domain of the inverse, but again, we see in this case, the range of a function is the same as the domain of its inverse. Go back to those notes again. Very important. So here, in set notation, it'll be all values of x such that x will be greater than negative 2. Okay? And there you go. So because in this case, the values are going to be switched between x and y. All right, so remember, ladies and gentlemen, that the inverse of a function just undoes the process. So what it comes down to is when you plug an x into a function and get back to y, for the inverse, if you plug the y into the inverse, you get back the x, okay? And so we see in this case, we can, ref we can kind of switch the x, y places with each other without a problem. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the end of our lesson number six. Hope it was helpful for you guys. If again, if you found this helpful, please give this video a like. Uh, let me know what you thought about the video in the comments and, and the, you know questions and suggestions in the in the feedback list. We'd love to hear that though. Okay, and of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get as many subscribers as possible. So you know, hopefully, it can be helpful. Uh, we're still working on that, but you know what though. You know, I just, just want to make sure that you guys learn the material so you guys are better at math, not so afraid of it and all. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care and be safe. See?